final countdown. Let's turn it over to Mission Control. Let's light this candle. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Command engine start. Two, one, zero. Ignition. Altimeter on the left, excuse me, altimeter on the right, and the speedometer on the left. Alright, as we go through this flight, there are a couple of milestones here. The first one will be uh, max Q, that's when the dynamic pressures uh, are the highest on the vehicle. We go from 100% power, pull it back a little bit as we go through max Q, and then ramp her back up to 100%. Max Q has been confirmed. Again, thank you everybody for joining us for New Shepard's 25th mission to space. So far, a nominal flight. We have gone through Max Q. 100,000 feet. And the vehicle will continue to climb under full power of the BE-3 engine. The next milestone will be main engine cutoff. You will know when that happens when you see the glow of the engine at the base of the rocket go dim. There we go, main engine cutoff confirmed. Passing 200,000 feet. Now with the main engine cut off, with the BE-3 U, excuse me, the BE-3 engine turned off, the vehicle continues to climb up towards its apogee, but as you will see on the left side, the speedometer will come down, and once that speedometer hits zero, that's when you know exactly that the vehicle has hit uh, apogee, its highest altitude in, uh, in the flight of the vehicle. Now I understand that separation of the capsule from the booster has been confirmed. And zero G has started for our astronauts. Shortly here, we're gonna let them unbuckle and enjoy the beauty of floating around in zero G, but of course the spectacular views out of those windows. And I'll say that having passed over 330,000 feet, they are over the Kármán line, so welcome to space, astronauts. <laughs> Fifth mission of New Shepard, our seventh human flight. I'll just acknowledge that the, uh, the milestone uh, figure on the left is a little bit out of sync, but that's okay. Follow along with me through this flight. I got you covered. At this point into flight, you see the two craft, the rocket on the left, the crew capsule on the right, aerodynamic surfaces that are going to guide it back to its landing pad just two miles north of the launch pad. And then just a little bit afterwards, we have the crew capsule, which will also come back down into that West Texas Valley.
All right, you see the, the excuse me, the booster that is headed down. You see the drag fins, the drag brakes that have just deployed. Those cut the speed of the booster in half. Also at the top of the rocket there, you see uh, the forward fins. They kind of look like pie slices, one on each quadrant. That helps keep the vehicle stable. And there we go, BE3 engine relight. Landing gear deployed. And touchdown. Welcome home, New Shepard. What a beautiful flight to space and back for that booster. Good day at the Rocket Factory, but flying people never gets old. On today's flight, uh, looks like we do have two parachutes that have full inflation. The third is not quite fully in, uh, inflated, but actually, Jackie, this is, um, this is part of the design. We, one of the, in fact, the we were talking about my first webcast, the first webcast that we did, we actually, we tested a shoot out. There are multiple redundant uh, factors in this, uh, in this system. And so landing with two parachutes is perfectly okay for this system. You'll also see the dust kick out of the base of the, uh, of the capsule as she comes into land. That is the air cushioning system. It's gonna kick up a lot of that West Texas dust you just talked about. But it also, there it is, touchdown of the crew capsule. A beautiful flight for our rocket, for our crew capsule, for our six new astronauts, Mason, Sylvain, Ken, Carol, Gopi, and Ed. You are officially astronauts. Welcome home, everybody. Yay! Here comes Ken Hess. Oh, no, Sharon, I love it. Hey. All right. Carol, Woo! welcome back. Unbelievable. <laughs> Siva. How was this? And here exits Ed Dwight. This gentleman has waited a long time to go to space. Selected in the early 60s as the first black astronaut to fly, although he did not get to fly then. Today was his opportunity, and man, what a flight for him. Finally, an official astronaut. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Gopito Takura. Gopi can add spaceship to the, the litany of vehicles that he's yeah. flying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put that in his logbook. That's right. And of course, Mason, welcome home. Uh, Leo will be very excited <laughs> to see Mason back on Earth. There's crew member seven, Laura Stiles, assembling our newly minted astronauts. Overwhelmed. <laughs> Everything you can think of. Uh, and I, 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 I thought I really didn't need this in my life, <laughs> but, but now I need it in my life. <laughs> this is fabulous. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being part of this. All right, yeah, I am ecstatic. Ecstatic. Did anything surprise you? What was it like looking at our? Well, yeah, the uh, the uh, the transitions about the separations and stuff were a little bit more dynamic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, they were nice, smooth. <laughs> but, 
but that's how it's supposed to be. But, but it makes your mind wander. There's something more wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it, it was absolutely terrific, and the view, I mean, it just, uh, even I couldn't see it, I could see it. <laughs> uh, it absolutely fantastic, absolutely. It's a life-changing experience. Everybody needs to do this. Everybody needs to do this. And she,